Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Jenkins Governance Board Meeting. Uh, today is uh, December 2nd, and we have a uh, number of uh, contributors on the call. Thanks, everyone, uh, for joining. Uh, today we have uh, several uh, topics in the agenda. Um, uh, we will uh, briefly talk about recent news, about uh, the election results, um, and then uh, we will focus on uh, other topics if uh, there is a quorum for them. So we have Jenkins X, uh, oh, sorry, Jenkins 3X discussion. Um, we have uh, Jenkins Kubernetes Operator updates and also uh, selecting new meeting slots because from what we've seen in the mailing list, this slot isn't very convenient for uh, all stakeholders. So we will definitely need to find another one. And we will also have a CFNL report uh, this was added by Mark here. Okay. So that's uh, the agenda. Um, um, so uh, let's uh, briefly go through the news. Um, and uh, yeah, maybe one major news is uh, Jenkins elections. Should we start from them or from others? Okay, so uh, Jenkins elections. Uh, you said that the elections are over. Thanks to everyone. Uh, uh, who participated. Um, yeah, it was a several months long process uh, with a lot of uh, different uh, steps involved. Uh, but yeah, finally we uh, finished it. Uh, we are ready to announce uh, the results. And uh, yeah, what are the current results? Uh, oh, and the final results that uh, uh, for Jenkins Governance Board, uh, um, uh, we have uh, uh, Mark, uh, who won uh, the popular vote according to uh, Confortnet. Then it's Marty, Gavin, Evelina, Justin, Steven, uh, Rick, uh, Fred, and uh, Andre. Uh, so first, uh, I think I would like to say there that we've got nine uh, awesome contributors and uh, uh, community members uh, on the ballot. So the Thanks to everyone who participated, and yeah, these votes uh, uh, basically for me it was a really tough choice to prioritize uh, the results. I guess the same for many others. And uh, yeah, uh, uh, the final results uh, that Mark and Gavin will uh, join uh, the governance board um, as uh, discussed. Uh, uh, Mark uh, cannot uh, join uh, because of the affiliation requirement. Uh, unfortunately, it happens uh, second year in the row. And yeah, maybe we, so we had some uh, discussions before, like uh, expanding the Jenkins uh, governance board or maybe making additional adjustments. So it's to be seen how we uh, approach that. But yeah, I would like to uh, thank Mark team for all the contributions uh, he makes to the project and also to the community governance. So, but yeah, according to our process, it will be a Mark and Gavin uh, joining the board. Yeah. And that's Marky and that's Gavin. Uh, would you like to say a few words? I, I, I can say something. Uh, first and foremost, I, I, I'm super humbled uh, I'm super thankful. Uh, this is a awesome project and I know there's been a lot of people that have done a lot of work here and I'm, I, I'm kind of lost for words, which is a, a striking thing because I'm never lost for words. Uh, I want to thank those that voted. I also want to thank those that were nominated. Uh, there's a lot of people that I'm extremely close to and, and do a lot of work in this community. So I'm just thankful all around for everybody. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say essentially the same thing. I'm a little bit in shock. Uh, I didn't really expect it to happen, and I'm kind of you know I'm very touched that it did happen, um, and I'm excited to see what the future holds. Thank you. So, any additional comments and questions from others? Uli, as uh, elections committee member, what's your impression? 
Yeah, uh, congratulations to everybody. It was really uh, impressive again how many people voted. And yeah, I'm happy about uh, that we are, have three new members or two new members. So yeah, because Mark again is not allowed to join, but maybe we can change, change that in later on if we have it in the next election that we have more people in the poll. Yeah, I think it's great. Thanks, Marky, and thank you, Gavin, both of you. You're a great addition to the board. Looking forward to your, your contributions. Thanks very much. Hi, this is Tracy. Yeah, just going to say congratulations all round. Great additions to the board. Mark, you 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 get to to win it without actually having to join. I think that's a <laughs> good too. And um, we've got a CDF newsletter going out. Um, so I, I think we'll, we'll add a line in there just to to mention that in, in the newsletter. Sounds like great news to share far and wide. Yeah, definitely. I added uh, the results uh, to the um, uh, Genesis project update. So if uh, you're talking oh, perfect. about uh, details, uh, then uh, ask for. Yeah, no, if you've added that, mm -hmm. um, I'll make sure Roxanne sees this. Okay. So, yeah. Thanks everyone uh, for the feedback. And uh, again, uh, governance board is uh, mostly a representative body. We have a lot more community leaders uh, helping with different roles, uh, including all participants on this list and many other contributors. So yeah, the, the Jenkins community is yeah, it's strong because we have a lot of uh, participants in different roles, uh, official or not and it helps us to move forward. Okay, uh, speaking of other roles, uh, we also had elections for Jenkins release officer. Um, as it was announced in the developer mailing list, uh, uh, Oliver Gonzo uh, decided to step down um, starting uh, from December. So we uh, have just had a Jenkins LCS release 2.63.1. And uh, yeah, this release was coordinated by Oliver in terms of backporting, um, and uh, it was uh, the last release. I would like to thank Oliver for all his hard work uh, on this uh, uh, position because Oliver was leading LCS process since 2013 or 2012, so it was long ago. And yeah, it's much appreciated. The same, yeah, I forgot to say, so for the uh, Jenkins Governance Board, uh, uh, Alex Earl uh, held one of the positions, another one was uh, held by Tyler. Um, so thanks uh, to both of them, because uh, they have a lot uh, with the Jenkins community with uh, uh, establishing uh, open governance in the project. And again, we are looking forward to work with them uh, in the community. Okay, so for release officer results, unfortunately, we don't have team on the call. As I proposed in the mailing list, uh, we will do another session uh, maybe next week with introductions. Maybe we even organize it uh, as an online meetup. Um, it's uh, something to discuss. Um, yeah, again, uh, for the release officer, we had uh, three uh, awesome contributors uh, who helped uh, uh, is uh, Jenkins, so Tim uh, he has been active contributor to the Jenkins core over the past two years. Uh, he created configuration as code plugin, uh, also Dark Team. He helped with in the Jenkins infrastructure and many other areas, and it's well deserved. Uh, so, and thanks uh, to Tim for taking this role because yeah, LCS officer is important position in the Jenkins community because. Yeah, uh, the release officer uh, coordinates uh, uh, all the backporting process and leads uh, the Jenkins uh, release team, which basically is responsible for all uh, wiki and uh, LCS releases. So welcome team. Uh, also, yeah, you had Batista Matos and Victor Martinez participating. Uh, most of them also contributed to various uh, uh, areas of the Jenkins community, including release processes, automation, uh, and the Jenkins core maintenance. So, yeah, thanks to them. And again, uh, yeah, uh, both of them are active contributors uh, and 
let's keep working in the community. Okay. So other updates, um, um, Alisa decided to step down uh, from the event uh, officer position. Um, uh, Mark, he will become event officer. Uh, this position was uh, not con uh, was uncontested, so we didn't have elections for that. But yeah, uh, welcome Mark to this role as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, filling Alyssa's shoes—that's a big, big, big task. So I'm going to definitely do my best. Mm -hmm. well, I'm here to support you, so you're not alone. Thank you so much, friend. Well, yeah, you have a uh, whole advocacy and outreach seek. Uh, you should ready to help these uh, various aspects of uh, Jenkins events and also uh, outreach programs, uh, community marketing, and other areas uh, um, which are closely aligned with Jenkins events. So, um, uh, Anyway, it will be a nice experience and thanks a lot to Marty for taking this role. Thank you for the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Okay, for other roles, uh, it basically remains the same. So Daniel will remain a security officer, uh, Olivier will uh, remain infrastructure officer, Mark uh, uh, will uh, keep his role as uh, documentation officer and thanks a lot for all documentation changes. Uh, um, in the uh, past uh, years, and uh, I forgot one officer, or not even. No, I didn't. So, yeah, the, that's basically all. Uh, it concludes uh, the elections. So, the next steps uh, is to firstly send the announcement in the developer mailing list. I will do it uh, tomorrow on the morning uh, in my time zone. And I also have a blog post um, in works. I target uh, uh, to publish it uh, in 24 hours or so. But before that, uh, I will send it uh, for review by others. So it might be slightly delayed. Uh, and uh, in the worst case, we might miss uh, publishing it tomorrow. But uh, yeah, official announcement will go to the developer mailing list. Okay. Any Comments, questions? Okay. So, obviously, we can always do better. And uh, here's a retrospective document. Uh, uh, this retrospective document is mostly empty at the moment. Uh, my suggestion is that we do it asynchronously. So, every contributor is welcome uh, to participate and uh, share feedback. And after that, we process this feedback and think how we could uh, make uh, the next elections better. Uh, these elections were the second ones in the Jenkins history. Uh, last uh, elections in 2019 have been driven by uh, Tracy, Olivia, Mark, and uh, yep, it was our first experience. Uh, they uh, went quite well. Um, we had a few retrospective items which have been addressed this year. Um, and uh, I think we should keep improving uh, this uh, process so that um, we, in the next elections um, we, uh, yeah, when, uh, we continue this uh, public process and get more and more participants involved. Yeah, and just to add, um, like I, I got to step back and just enjoy it as, as someone voting this year and certainly from my perspective it all seem to go uh, really smoothly and really well done and mm -hmm. no one's counting votes for months to come. So <laughs> there's that. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think mm -hmm. it's really nice to see so many candidates and to see all the, the interest in the community um, that the elections bring. So yeah, no, congratulations all around. Thank you. Okay. Any additional feedback? I think your observations on points of feedback in the document are, are spot on, are exactly correct. Low registration numbers is an interesting one that I'm not sure how we address it, but I'm fascinated by it. Last year we had, we had, we, we must have sent what, almost 100,000 email messages and, and had 
a larger registration than we did this year, but this year we decided not to bomb mail bomb people at the same way we did last year. Yeah. So, so it was it was I was trying to look at the results last year. It was 150 votes last year and 50 this year. Um, so last year it was almost 300 votes. This year yeah. it was uh, almost 70. So yeah, if you want to see the numbers, um, yeah, you can uh, just go here. So yeah, the numbers are here. So this is government board elections, 65 voters um, and uh, 94 um, registered voters. So it's after processing of registrations, duplication, clarification. Um, so the numbers are considerably lower than in previous year. Uh, as Mark said, it's mostly explained by the fact that we didn't uh, send the emails to every user. Uh, retrospectively, maybe we should have done that, uh, but uh, yeah, not sending the mails was one of the top uh, feedback uh, from the previous year. So it was a deliberate decision. We changed the process. We agreed on this change and um, it's uh, something to, to discuss uh, going forward because yeah, we are also interested uh, to get more votes. Yeah. And yeah, my other uh, topics to consider is also a number of um, uh, uh, nominations because yeah, we have got quite a lot of nominations, but they came uh, from not so many contributors. Um, it reflects uh, the state uh, of the previous uh, years, and it also reflects uh, the situation in other open source communities when uh, elections actually are not that popular. Um, but yeah, we need to think how we could improve it. Um, because, yeah, um, uh, there could be more things. And also, of course, large administration other head, because, yeah. Uh, uh, there was a lot of preparation, a lot of bureaucracy on all different stages. And yeah, maybe we need to think how to optimize it so that uh, it uh, takes less time uh, to organize and drive the elections. Mm -hmm. Well, like one of one of my concerns initially was that it, the verification process mm -hmm. might be heavyweight for the elections um, committee was the verification process painful or heavyweight for you? Did you find that difficult or taking a lot of time? Uh, the verification process uh, was, the, so this year we had uh, three uh, members of the elections committee, board members uh, who are not up for elections. It was Uli, um, Alex Earl and me. And yeah, we needed to verify uh, around 100 uh, responses, uh, a bit more. Uh, but I wouldn't say that it was a big overhead to do the verification, because firstly, we were able to do it gradually. Uh, once we discovered that in, um, uh, in uh, CIPS we can uh, add voters, uh, we expanded uh, the registration time. So we were able uh, to gradually add voters and uh, yeah, verification was so trivial in many cases because yeah, there were known contributors with known emails. They were contributors uh, who needed verification, uh, but I would say that uh, the level of uh, spam uh, registrations was uh, low. And uh, so if we had uh, 100,000 registrations uh, for voting, this process won't work. Uh, but uh, we can uh, definitely scale maybe 10 times without uh, massive overhead. Great. Thank you. Thanks to the thanks to the elections mm -hmm. committee for doing that. Was just curious. Yeah. Oh, uh, that part uh, wasn't difficult. Uh, yeah, the most difficult part was actually just uh, promoting the elections, uh, trying to get uh, more registrations, um, etc. And yeah, you know, if you have feedback how we could have done it better, it would be much appreciated. Because this year, well, there were completely different uh, things on the minds of uh, people. Also, timing of the Jenkins elections uh, wasn't perfect, taking events uh, in other countries, but yeah, uh, whatever. Anyway, so I think that we can this topic.
Uh, and again, thanks to everyone uh, who participated, who voted. Thanks to all the candidates. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's great uh, to have uh, the elections over. And hopefully, with more contributors in uh, roles, now we can continue pushing uh, the Jenkins project and uh, continue evolving its roadmap and uh, facilitate other critical initiatives uh, we have. Um, both uh, community initiatives and uh, technical initiatives. Hmm? Are we able to say anything publicly, or should we uh, should we hold? Mm. Personally, I don't have strong opinion because uh, well, the results are public. Um, Uli, what do you think? I, I would like to wait until the Jenkins I.O. post goes up. Okay, so. I mean, there's, there's no reason not to say anything. I just I think it's nicer to have Jenkins be the, the, the main source of information and everyone else announcing it afterwards. Fair point. Good call. Okay, so yeah, let's target uh, publishing tomorrow. I'll do my best to submit it uh, for review within several hours. I have the blog post almost finished. Uh, so, yeah, and then on Friday, we can uh, start uh, on Thursday and Friday, we use all social media, etc. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, regarding uh, other topics, should we go back to news or should we continue through the agenda? I guess, yeah, these topics, uh, I'm not sure whether we have uh, uh, all the new people on the call to discuss. But yeah. let's return to news and then uh, continue through the agenda. Okay, so other news. Uh, get Jenkins your outage uh, two weeks ago. Uh, Mark, would you like to briefly summarize? Sure. So we, we had a 40-hour mm -hmm. outage two weeks ago during where the Azure file storage on which we depend uh, was unavailable. We couldn't mount it. Um, Olivier found a workaround by moving the service to another location. We're still using that workaround. It's running just fine. Uh, we asked Microsoft to please do a root cause to explain to us why it failed. Uh, especially since roughly seven days after the failure, it started working again. But we hadn't done anything that caused it to start working again. Uh, mm -hmm. I received a call this morning about, about six hours ago from uh, Microsoft support in Europe reporting that, gee, didn't you do, asking, didn't you do something that fixed it? No, we really didn't. And they are now going to report back trying to find the root cause from their side. Uh, Olivier's plan there is to switch back to the, uh, to the original solution uh, either late this week or early next week, because it does seem to be running again and it lets us use Azure, for Azure file storage in a very elegant and direct technique. So any questions there, happy to answer them. A retrospective is there. There are certainly many things we learned from instant about incident management and what to do with it. To we'll we'll keep working at it. I just wanted to say thanks uh, to all contributors who were involved in uh, uh, fixing it because we uh, had uh, almost. And there's now the status. Sorry, there's now the status page as well. Status page is under development. Uh, and so it's not been publicly declared, but there is certainly is a status page that Olivier has been using as part of that. Mm -hmm. So this one. So um, should we not be linking to it and stuff yet, or is it worth linking to something as well? I, good question. I don't know the answer. That's a that's a fair question. I suspect Olivier would would say that hey, it's it's good enough, but I consider it still a work in progress. Mm -hmm. well, a status page uh, is definitely better than no status page. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I guess that's my thinking is 
if we have something we can link to, that's good. If it doesn't get updated, it's not any worse than it was before. So, right. Yeah. So, yeah, let's see how it goes. But um, yeah, we will need to document it. Right now, we have uh, direct links uh, to Databug uh, dashboards on our website. So, and is that the uh, dashboards on this page anyway? Okay. So again, thanks to everyone who was involved. Um, yeah, it was quite an expected outage, uh, uh, but yeah, we, in two days we were able to basically rebuild the, the functionality using another platform. And yeah, this is a, a functionality which serves uh, uh, hundreds of thousands of uh, uh, downloads every month. So it's not something, uh, well, scale matters, uh, mirrors matter, and also, there is a lot of associated costs um, with that. So, yeah, later that uh, you will be able to fix it quickly. Okay. LCS release. Mm, yeah, we have one. Again, thanks to everyone uh, who was uh, involved. Uh, and uh, I guess uh, it's all uh, uh, in place now. So if you go to change logs table, yeah, you can see the release, uh, there are upgrade guidelines and everything looks pretty good. So yeah, this uh, process uh, runs well and again, uh, it uses a new automation infrastructure. Uh, so now we're doing uh, weekly MLTS releases is quite easy. So it's a result of a long uh, work uh, by the infrastructure and the release teams uh, um, in the past year. So for us, um, another interesting topic is that we will be doing a winter break. According to our current process, we should have uh, created uh, the release candidate uh, um, in uh, late uh, uh, December, and uh, we should have done uh, the final release on 30th of December or something like that for dot two. So we decided to postpone it uh, by two weeks. And um, uh, the release will go out in mid January. January settings. Okay. Anything else about releases? Okay. Then a yeah, quick update on Google Summer of Code. It will happen. There are some changes uh, in the process, but largely it remains uh, the same as uh, in the previous years. We have restarted the office hours. We are looking for mentors, project ideas. So if everyone is interested, if anyone is interested, uh, please uh, join us uh, using the standard channels and everything is in place. Uh, we will uh, send official announcements to the developer mailing list maybe next week. Uh, but yeah, process-wise, everything is ready to accept uh, new project ideas and uh, interested students. And we already uh, had uh, um, a dozen students or so asking uh, about uh, project ideas. So, yeah, uh, GSOC 2021 has started. Mm -hmm. Oleg, I have a question in regards to that. Yeah. Will we start up the org admin meetings again for planning purposes and things like that? Mm. So, how we used to do it in previous years while mm -hmm. we um, in the application phase in before we just uh, do office hours because okay. uh, there is nothing really secret in the process um, because yeah we can discuss application etc in public it's open source for our project anyway uh, so um, i think we could just do office hours if the timing is fine with you and we could uh, revisit timing if you want to find another slot. So, okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Historically, we start uh, our main meetings uh, when the student application phase is over. Because uh, this is when we, we need to make decisions uh, to review the applications and to do, other, to do other sensitive things which just cannot be discussed in public. Any additional questions? Mm -hmm. Then, yeah, just for your information, there is a discussion about uh, Jenkins 3X. This discussion has been started by James North. Um, 
several days ago. So um, almost one week by now. Uh, there is a lot of feedback and clearly we have no consensus in this thread at the moment. Um, but yeah, my call with it since now we have a new release officer, uh, board members, and uh, we definitely need feedback uh, from stakeholders uh, to understand whether we want to plan for Gen 3 because it would involve uh, many different actions uh, required from the community and from the teams. Mm. And for us, the main question is whether we actually need to do that, uh, or whether it, whether there is interest in the community to do that. And, and once we get the consensus, then we uh, can start planning if we decide to do Jinx three release. So largely, it was uh, explained uh, by the breaking changes we introduced, including um, tables to beeps, uh, which still needs to be stabilized towards the next LTS release, but plugins which haven't been updated, and uh, in addition, extreme uh, SNG security, update to Spring security, and uh, jQuery updates, plus uh, a lot of other minor breaking changes here and there, mostly for deprecations. Um, so, yeah. Uh, from technical standpoint, it might be justified, uh, and we need to discuss it. So that's just for your information. And if you have feedback, please put it uh, in the mailing list. I don't think that we are ready to vote. Uh, is it fine with everyone, or mm -hmm. should we discuss this topic? In the end, it's, it's the release officer that really gets to decide right or put heavy weight on it. Mm, so I don't think that it's a uh, police officer deciding there because uh, decision making okay. uh, happens by the consensus in the community. Uh, but obviously, the release officer has a say, and until we have release officer, uh, I wouldn't make this decision. Yeah. Because I don't think there's a consensus yet. It looks like it's three groups all saying same thing, but different things and everything else. So it's, it's a little chaotic. It's a good discussion. Yep. So yeah, maybe we could spend the entire meeting at some point on that. Uh, but yeah. For us, we need to decide until we start to release candidate uh, for the next baseline, and it's late January, if I recall correctly. So we still have plenty of time. Okay. So moving on, uh, Jenkins Kubernetes operator updates, uh, just a quick update uh, on the status. Uh, so the uh, development is in different areas. Now we have uh, two operators. One is called uh, Jenkins operator, which is the original one. And uh, yeah, now it's back to the active phase of the development as it was announced by VirtuSchlab. So there is some development happening in this repository. Uh, it's uh, great. And yeah, thanks a lot for stakeholders contributing. Um, and um, yeah, we also have uh, the second operator uh, as it was requested by uh, the Red Hat team. Uh, they basically uh, diverted to having a separate port uh, uh, in upstream. So uh, currently it's called uh, simple uh, Kubernetes, simple Jenkins operator. This name is subject uh, for change. And uh, there is pending discussion about uh, what is actually inside. But as we discussed at previous governance meetings, we basically have two operators. And um, from my understanding, these operators have different roadmaps. So I'm not sure whether they evolve, but yeah, that's uh, the current situation. Mm. Well, on the same topic, uh, there is also a trademark sub sublicense request because Virtuschlab uh, has launched a commercial product uh, based on uh, the original Jenkins operator. Uh, well, they haven't launched yet. Uh, they just announced a uh, private uh, preview. So it's not the face of wide announcements. 
and that is a pending uh, three uh, matrix of license request. So we will need uh, to define what would be the best name. Uh, of, uh, so as we agreed at the previous meetings, we have a uh, trademark usage policy, uh, which uh, strongly recommends using uh, Linux Foundation trademark guidelines. Uh, but uh, there is still an opportunity to divert to other naming pattern if uh, the community calls for that. So that's the current state. Again, uh, we don't uh, have uh, the first up uh, representatives at the call. So I'm not sure what we can proceed right now. So if anyone has strong opinions uh, about names, maybe we should uh, discuss that so that we can communicate feedback to the requester. I still personally have a lot of questions, not so much around the name, but more mm -hmm. around what what took place between Red Hat needing to create a second operator. But I know there's history behind that, so I may just take it offline. And mm -hmm. yeah, there is a history. Uh, some bits of this history are in public uh, in the developer manifest threads. Also, um, there is a Jenkins governance board. We, uh, we are participating in communications between uh, parties uh, looking for potential solution. Um, yeah, so there is also a private conversation part. Uh, but yeah, well, not that much of the private uh, part on this stage. Let's see so. My understanding is that uh, the current uh, name uh, Virtuschlap is being called as Virtuschlap uh, Jenkins Operator Service. So basically, it's, um, it follows uh, the historical pattern of naming, which we had uh, before we agreed uh, to follow Linux Foundation guidelines as our main preference. So in the mailing list, I proposed uh, Virtuschlap Operator Service for Jenkins uh, also. So as long as uh, there is uh, such a distinction, uh, yeah, uh, it falls in the, the category of, of pre-approved trademarks uh, in the uh, Linux Foundation. Well, uh, well, patterns which are considered to be a fair use. So, um, yeah, uh, personally, I would wait for response whether it would be feasible. If yes, then I think uh, we are fine. If not, we will likely need to vote on uh, this name. And yeah, then uh, let's vote. I'm not sure about. Uh, are you ready to vote now? Mm -hmm. I personally am not ready to vote. Mm -hmm. I think Nora might. We should wait for the answer, or? Okay. So then uh, let's wait and yeah, uh, taken, uh, if uh, this uh, pattern is taken, uh, we won't need to wait until the next meeting uh, to confirm it. Okay, mm. so. So next topic uh, is uh, selecting new governance meetings slots. I suggest that we just start a new doodle because we have uh, more contributors joining and yet this slot has been considered as uh, complicated uh, before, especially for Europe. So we can uh, try to find another slot, maybe even on another day. Um, yeah, let's see whether we can uh, find uh, something. I will uh, start uh, the doodle uh, maybe tomorrow. Mm -hmm. yeah. Also, there was a discussion about whether you want to keep uh, the slots only in the um, current time zone because uh, in 
technically it would be great to have uh, coverage for Asian and Pacific region uh, somehow, um, so we could start locating slots, but uh, yeah, it's a complicated uh, topic again, and we need uh, to see whether there would be contributors. Yes, meetings. Um, and any comments, proposals regarding the slots or the meeting gardens or whatever related to the governance meetings? I personally like this time slot, but I don't think it's good for anyone else. I can be flexible. So again, we are not making decision now. So let's uh, just start. Uh, Kevin the... and Marky, you are both in the US time zone. I'm in Pacific in Canada, yeah. Yeah, Pacific as well. So we can do the other side. Really early European is good too. Sure. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's something we could do. So yeah, let's see. Okay. Um, okay. Mm, I will send it to the developer mailing list, but I will um, CC all the usual suspects uh, so that uh, we get uh, contributors on uh, the fight. Okay. Uh, CDF annual report. Uh, Mark, would you like to speak about it? I put this on here. Uh, Mark attended the meeting. Thank you for attending the meeting, Mark. Uh, we need to, uh, I believe by January 13th, don't quote me on that. Yep. Uh, we need to have the report ready. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to find the actual information. Yeah, I must uh, can share. Yeah, January 13th. Yep. So we may pull in the data. Uh, I can help. Anybody wants to tag team on it to get that report ready. Mark, did you have anything you wanted to add from attending the meeting, the CDF meeting today? No, they'll review it with Tracy mid-December. And it looks like the format will be largely like it was in 2019. The format, as far as I could see, looks like a good fit for our need to communicate our message. Mm -hmm. So in 2019, we basically created our own New Year blog post, and based on that, uh, the Continuous Delivery Foundation refactored it uh, to its summary blog post by yeah, optimizing the content a bit, because yeah, there are more projects to present. Uh, maybe this time we could do the same. So first we do our blog post, which could be uh, quite longer. Maybe we could even publish it before the New Year. Uh, and after that, uh, we could just work this uh, CDF to refactor this information to the CDF uh, summary. If you'd like, I can take that task. But I don't want to take it from anyone that may want it. Well, we can uh, collaborate. Uh, but yeah, if you want to drive this effort, uh, yes, please feel free to go ahead. Got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, we can uh, even uh, write it in a Google Doc if it's a if it's preferable uh, for collaboration, or we could uh, do it uh, as pull request, this uh, change suggestions. It's how we tried to do it last year. Yeah, I think I'll do, I remember it from last year, and I think what I'll do mm -hmm. is just start start off with the Google Doc, and then we can move it into a PR once we're all in agreement that it's ready. Yep, that's perfectly fine. Okay. Any other topics for today? I was just thinking, you sent an email to me directly 
about getting Hacktoberfest results? Did you get a result back from that? Uh, no, uh, so um, I didn't expect uh, to get them soon because okay. um, uh, from what I discovered with the Hacktoberfest uh, uh, main uh, blog post and main uh, status report is uh, not ready yet. Okay. So the Hacktoberfest team is just uh, focusing on uh, getting uh, their uh, own results out of the door and after that uh, um, uh, they uh, may be able to help uh, and provide yes. data to us. For example, the Continuous Delivery Foundation has already uh, posted a blog post uh, today or yesterday um, about Hacktoberfest. We shared some details uh, I and mean, statistics uh, which was collected uh, from um, the public uh, resources. But yeah, that's a problem with Hacktoberfest because we cannot identify all our contributors uh, with the current process. So we should be able to now because it has to be labeled repo or labeled issue. Yeah, right. Uh, but uh, how do you determine uh, who can to just labeled repo and uh, since how to the first pull request? I, I assume I always error. I would always err on anything in, in the month of October is considered October the first. So, yeah, this is one of the options. Um, in our case, I, when I was sending data to Continuous Delivery Foundation, I just took a blog post, sorry, a pull request which has been explicitly marked, marked with Hacktoberfest as a separate uh, label. Mm -hmm. We had uh, something like 150 something uh, pull requests and 37 unique contributors. And yeah, these uh, numbers basically, I believe, uh, come from the Jenkins project for some increment uh, for contributors uh, which were identified for other organizations. Um, yep. It would be awesome if we publish our own summary blog post later. Uh, why not? Um, but yeah, right now we just have uh, partial data. So this partial data is also enough because we have uh, quite a few developments uh, during Hacktoberfest from contributors like terminology cleanup, uh, plugin documentation migration, and all other uh, things we advertised for Hacktoberfest. Yep. So I think we need uh, to keep working on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If uh, really, if we can just put it uh, to the um, for another report. Hmm? Any other topics? So then, uh, yeah, we'll start a doodle for all uh, board members, officers, and other contributors. Uh, uh, for the next week to see whether we could uh, find uh, another slot uh, for doing announcements. Um, and uh, I will also send another Google uh, to schedule the next governance meeting. Sounds good. Thanks, Oleg. Yeah. Thanks, all. And yeah, thanks uh, again uh, to all people who contributed uh, to the Jenkins project. Uh, the elections. Thank you, everybody. Have a great Thanks rest of the week. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. I will stop it.